What's up everybody, welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you guys with the most up-to-date political, economic and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony, let's jump in. Okay, happy Thursday everybody. As Shanghai's residents approach one month under lockdown, the megacity of 26 million people may finally be turning a corner with officially recognized daily cases falling for the fourth day in a row today. Large declines in reported cases began on Monday with 16,980 infections, 13% fewer than Sunday. At that point too, on Monday, more than 90% of the new cases were found in lockdown or central quarantine. While this could be a sign that residents can be somewhat optimistic, we still must exercise caution. Authorities understand this too. For example, the next day on Tuesday, speaking at a news conference, Zhao Dandan, a deputy director of the Shanghai Municipal Health Commission, expressed that the trend looked positive, but that, quote, it is far from time for the city to let its guard down, end quote, and that strict policies for so-called high-risk areas will be maintained. Then on Wednesday, yesterday, Shanghai authorities said that new rounds of COVID-19 testing over the next few days will determine which neighborhoods can start reopening. While some parts of the city have seen some loosening of restrictions, the majority of residents remain under strict lockdown. Even if things start returning to normal in the coming weeks, the lockdown is going to have lasting social and economic fallout for the financial center. As an international financial hub, international labor and business confidence in the city has been hit hard with this outbreak and the policy response, that is the strict lockdown. According to a survey of 950 expats in Shanghai published by a local firm this week, almost 50% of them plan to leave the city within one year. 50% of Shanghai's international labor market is thus expressing that they want to leave. Now, even if many change their minds, this is still a very high proportion. Then, an additional 37% surveyed expressed that they will decide whether to stay or leave after the end of the pandemic. Many of these are not just highly skilled workers with transnational employers in key industries, but also highly skilled teachers who man the international schools needed to support high-level talent who typically need good schools for their children. It is not just foreign talent that will feel the push factor too, but also highly skilled Chinese with international experience and or foreign passports and thus greater labor mobility. One professional speaking to UK-based Canadian-owned Reuters, Jason Tan, a Shanghai-based director specializing in wealth and fintech at a top international headhunting firm, expressed, quote, Once this lockdown is over, expats across all industries will negotiate a new career outside of China. It's not very attractive moving forward. This lockdown can happen again. Next time, it might be longer and tighter. End quote. Meanwhile, the capital city of Beijing is currently carrying out mass testing of millions of its residents. Nervous Beijing residents have started stockpiling food and other supplies, and even more nervous authorities are working hard to avoid the disaster that Shanghai has gone through over the last almost month now. Beijing reported 34 new cases yesterday. Wednesday. And of course, small outbreaks are being managed all across the country, with large parts of China seeing restrictions put in place, partial lockdowns or full lockdowns. Indeed, it appears that restrictions and the risk of lockdowns is spreading to more regions. Today, for reasons which are still being confirmed, as of 8.30 a.m. this morning, the main international airport of the mega city of Guangzhou, sometimes known as Canton in English, where we get the word Cantonese, cancelled more than 90% of its flights, according to flight information provider Veriflight. In Changchun, the provincial capital of the northeast province of Jilin, after over two months of varying degrees of lockdowns, mostly very tight lockdowns, there may finally be some light at the end of the tunnel for its residents. On Wednesday, yesterday, authorities announced that the city will, quote, remove the citywide closed-off management gradually from Thursday. 
end quote. Next up, we have the quote of the week. But first, quickly, guys, if you're enjoying the content, don't forget to hit the like button. It really does help a small channel like this grow. And for anyone who wants to go the extra mile, Patreon, buy me a coffee, and crypto links are in the description below. As always, everybody, thank you so much for your ongoing support. Okay, up next, like I said, the quote of the week. And this week, we are looking at comments made by the President of the United States, uh, Joe Biden at a DNC fundraiser event in Seattle, Washington last week. The U.S. head of state comments on his personal views and interactions with General Secretary Xi Jinping. Let's just dive into the quote, which I think speaks for itself. Quote, I've had long discussions and over many, many hours, I mean literally over, I think it's now up to 70 some hours with Xi Jinping, we traveled 17,000 miles and he doesn't have a democratic, with a small d, bone in his body. He's a very smart and calculating guy and he's just very straightforward with me. He doesn't think that democracies can be sustained in the 21st century. In the second quarter of the century, because things are moving so rapidly, so incredibly fast, that only, he doesn't say autocracy, only autocracies are able to handle it. He said, what are you going to do? And I said, what I'm going to do is re-establish our alliances. And by my implication, he said, that's, that's because you're trying to hurt China. I also indicated to Xi Jinping that I was going to pull together the Quad, Australia, India, Japan, and the United States. He said, you're just doing that to affect us. End quote. And last off for today, we continue our coverage of the Chinese property sector. Last time we looked at the demand side with households. So uh, this time, let's move our focus back to the supply side with property developers. Analysts are increasingly noticing a trend which we ourselves have been following for some time now. Bonds from China's crisis at developers are seeing some of their worst losses ever offshore. But in contrast, we're seeing very fairly relative calm in the local market where bondholders are having less issues getting repaid. This divergence is apparent with many developers, which we have explored before. A very high profile example can be seen with the dollar notes of Shimao Group Holdings Limited, uh, which have plunged while yuan bonds have been stable. These are the onshore bonds. This is also the case with Sunic. All of developer Yu Zhou's uh, offshore bonds are now below 20 cents on the dollar, while its active yuan notes last traded above face value. Quote, Chinese junk dollar bonds, the bulk of which come from developers, are in their worst losing streak on record. The Bloomberg index going back to 2009, declining for an eighth straight month. China's local credit market isn't immune, but it's weathered the crisis before amid support from domestic lenders that may provide lifelines for the long run. End quote. Analysts have also pointed out that companies that go through debt restructuring are often focusing exclusively on domestic creditors in the early phase of restructuring. One analyst observed that offshore holders face a subordination risk, which, uh, among, uh, along with uh, other risks, the market has priced into the overseas bond prices. While this does seem unfair for dollar bond holders, it also hurts all high-yield issuers in China as it increases the cost of accessing capital in international bond markets. Meanwhile, the government continues to encourage onshore financial institutions to lend to property developers. Chinese financial media outlet Tsai Xin reports that China's financial regulators have instructed the country's state-owned asset management companies, AMCs, and nearly 20 banks to help out a dozen Chinese real estate developers that are having trouble paying their bills, including purchasing their liabilities. Twelve large property firms were listed, including China Evergrande Group, Sunic China Holdings Limited, and Shimao Group Holdings Limited. Quote, the instructions came as the real estate industry's liquidity situation has deteriorated, with many builders struggling to refinance debt 
and paid creditors as home buyers and investors stand on the sidelines of a slumping property market. End quote. We will continue following China's property market or housing market crisis in the coming weeks and coming months. Hey guys, I'd love to hear what you thought about some of the updates we covered in today's episode. So throw your comments below. Always love hearing from you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.